So the concept's pretty simple. Uh, what we're doing is basically just making an oversized lipless crankbait. To squeeze a little bit more action out of it, what I did on this one is I just beveled that front part to make a large flat area, and that's what's going to catch the water and, and make it move. spend much more time than you'd think fussing over gills. Internally, I'm gonna have the bulk of my weight like right up in here. You want it in the front, on the belly, and of course what you're trying to do is get this thing to pull through the water like this to where it, it swims kind of tail up shimmies back and forth. I've been doing a little bit more designing and head scratching here about how I'm going to make this bait. I've never done two halves of a bait where I split it and then I carve out the interior of it. And I think I'd like to try that for this particular lure and also it'll help me do my through wire a little bit easier. So what I'll do is I'll have to carve out a little groove in the middle for all of these pieces here. And then what these dark spots are these are cavities that I'm gonna put my lead in. And as you can see, there's an awful lot of lead in there because this is gonna be a sinking bait. It's gonna be a fast sinking bait and it really needs to be heavy up towards the front. Um, so I may change those up a little bit as things go along, um, but that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. But anyway, um, I also have some rattles here that I'm gonna drill, drill into it and I'll put a BB inside. Um, three here and then three here towards the tail where it really moves and that'll just add uh, a little something to it give it some more noise and hopefully attract some of those fish that we're looking for I've got this nice piece of basswood that I'm going to be using for this lure but I'm going to need to cut it down to size first I've got three pieces obviously, two are one quarter of an inch thick, and then the middle is a half inch thick. And what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna have this middle piece here where I can just carve out all of this stuff in the middle. And then I can glue these other pieces on there and sandwich it in there. And then once I've done that, I'll have that void already on the inside. That's my thought anyway. So for now, what I need to do is temporarily glue these all together. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of different glues I could use, but if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you know I prefer hot glue for this, uh, just to kind of tack it together for now. And then I've got a block of wood here because it's smooth. My, my countertop is not smooth. There's daubs of glue and stuff all over it. So I need something flat where I can glue these up and keep it square. Doesn't take much.
I'm not going to remove a whole lot of material from these corners here because I want to keep this head area as large and flat as I can. Then once I get back here towards the tail, um, I don't mind rounding it off completely. So let's See if we can't get this thing taken apart without breaking it. Um, I'm going to be using some rubbing alcohol here. And I'm going to use my little dropper. And the capillary action of the wood should suck that down in that joint and release the hot glue. Oh, it's coming. Boom. Nice, huh? I'm at the point now that I'm ready to make my through wire 
and uh, I'm gonna change it just ever so slightly. I'm gonna use these little double barrel crimps. Uh, I've already had one here, but I'm gonna use one in all three locations just to make my job easier. I can twist that, but um, I'm gonna be using this 0.062 inch stainless steel lock wire, which is a lot stiffer and harder to work with. Uh, but I think it will be better for this particular lure because this one's going to be used for, you know, tuna and, and big game fish. So I want to have a little bit bigger wire for that. So I've got all that routed out of there and you can see I went a little bit past the center line so that when this is sitting in there the wire will be sitting right in the middle. Since these holes are going to be for rattles, I'm going to go ahead and seal those really well with some Instacure for a couple of reasons. One, I don't want there to ever be a moisture issue with those, even though it's going to be sealed inside. But the other is, if I can harden the walls of that, it might make a little bit louder rattle. So we're just going to run a little bit of this through there. And then once that cures up, I'm going to 
re-drill it so that they're nice and smooth. So I'm ready to epoxy this one side on and I think what I'm going to do is just rough up uh, both of these surfaces so that the glue has something to mechanically attach to. And uh, you can see I've kind of marked out the areas to avoid. I don't really need to rough those areas up. I'm gonna use this burr here and just score some lines on there. What I'd like to do is kind of tack it in and dam up these openings here with uh, baking soda and Instacure. Um, that way I can come back and pour resin and fill it up uh, the rest of the way. This is going to set up pretty fast because uh, it's already really hot in here. And it's also in a cup which concentrates all of the resin into one spot and makes it heat up. So that uh, reduces your working time somewhat. That's all set up and you can see that the uh, through wire is fully encased in resin. Um, what I'm probably going to do right now is just take this over to the belt sander and sand this face smooth again because uh, it's not, not all that flush anymore. But we'll get that down smooth and then uh, we'll probably start thinking about putting some lead in there. So we've got the lead pot warmed up here and I'm going to start by adding lead in this front nose section. But I'm just going to do a little bit at a time because this stuff's pretty hot. I don't know, I'm just afraid of putting too much in there and the heat being too much. So I'm just going to do a small shallow layer and then I'll let that cool and then I'll build up another one from there.
Now that we've got the lead in there, and this is as close as it's going to be to uh, the finished internal uh, components, I'm going to add some of these little BBs into my rattles here and just hear what that sounds like real quick. I'm going to put one BB in each. All right. It's pretty loud. I'm going to put another BB in each one, so there'd be two. That'll decrease the travel distance of the of the BBs, but you might get a little bit more of a metal on metal sound. I don't know. Let's just see what we got here. Nah, that's too low. So I think we're gonna stick with one BB in each one and get that real high pitched sound. At this point, I really think we're ready to rough up both sides of this and epoxy this cover back on. So I wound up um, spraying a coat of KBS Diamond Clear on there, and I'm sorry I didn't show that, but really wasn't much to it. I just wanted to add a little bit more waterproofness um, to this wood before I move on, and maybe add just a slightly harder shell on there, but I think most of the heavy lifting on the, on the hardness uh, comes from the Instacure. But anyway, with the use of this particular lure, I want it to be as watertight as I can possibly get it. Right now, we're going to move on to foiling. If you'd like more detail on how I foil my lures, I've got a short video dedicated to the subject, which you can check out at the link above. Okay. I'm going to paint this lure a little bit different than I normally do. Um, I'm going to do all alcohol inks on the foil because I want to give it this kind of shiny chrome look but with lots of color. And so I've kind of sketched out a little plan here of, of my color scheme that we're going to shoot for. Now to get a symmetrical pattern, I'm going to use a um, technique that I used on the grouper glide bait. I'm going to get a piece of wax paper and a roll of painter's tape. I'm just going to apply that tape to both sides.
We're going to wipe this down once more with some rubbing alcohol just to degrease the surface. Make sure we don't have any problems with our painting. Okay, let's get these stripes put on. Since it's a nice day outside today, I thought I'd spray this um, out here. I'm going to put three thin layers of this Kamar varnish on it. Now that that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and put on three thin coats of this UV resistant clear. Okay, so I let this sit overnight. It's got the Kamar varnish and the UV clear on it. I wanted that to set up nice and hard before I did anything. Today is gonna be clear coat, and I'm a little bit nervous about it because I thought about it back and forth, which clear coat to use, and I've decided to move forward with the KBS uh, Diamond Clear. Um, the reason I'm nervous about it is I don't have a whole lot of experience with that. I've only used it on one lure. And so um, I'm a little bit nervous about trying it over this foil and this alcohol ink. It should be okay, but I've never done it before. What I do like about the KBS so far is that it's pretty thin. And so it'll maintain all that carving detail and it, and it gives my 
lure a little bit more of that 3D dimension. There's a little bit of a learning curve for me here on this uh, new clear coat. For the most part, it turned out really great, uh, but if we get in close here, you can see in these areas that are a lot deeper, uh, it developed some bubbles, and I think that's entirely my fault. I should have uh, brushed those areas out and kept them thinner. This is a really beautiful clear coat, but it must be thin. Um, if you leave it thick at all, apparently it will form some bubbles. So on the other side, I've been kind of working very carefully on um, sanding those areas out. It was actually, this is the worst side really. Uh, it was really bad. And so I'm trying to be very careful not to sand through the clear coat um, because if I do, it'll ruin my foil paint job. Uh, but I'm trying to just sand kind of the tops off of those um, bubbles there. And then when I put a new clear coat on it, maybe those will fade away a little bit. I'm not going to toss this out just because it formed a few bubbles. It's still going to be a good working lure. And maybe we can work some of those bubbles out. But moving forward, I'm just going to be really, really careful about brushing out those areas and keeping those nice and thin uh, so that we don't have this bubble issue. But I do want to say I still really do like this clear coat because it's nice and thin and it's really beautiful and it's hard. So I'm not going to give up on this clear coat. It's just something that I need to learn how to work with a little bit better and be more mindful of how thick it's getting in places because that's part of the reason I like it is that it does accept these contours and keeps it, you know, it keeps it that three dimensional uh, look, which is what I really like. And I gotta tell you, that kind of work is not for the faint of heart. It is nerve wracking trying to sand down just enough to get to the bubbles, but not through the bubbles. Yeah, that is better. Maybe when I put the actual clear coat on, it'll make it even better than that. All right, we're going to go over that with a little bit of iridescent yellow. Now I'm going to mist over that with just a little bit of this pearl blue. I think I'm going to stretch some of this mesh over the, the back of it. And I'd really like to paint it with some of this color shift paint here. Uh, electric blue intense violet. I think that would look really good along the back there.
I believe we're ready this morning to get started with some clear coating. We're going to continue on with our KBS Diamond Clear. I've done a little bit more research on it and reading and uh, I think where I went wrong earlier was putting it on my rotisserie and rotating it. And what it did is allowed some of that KBS to build up uh, in the deeper spots, which formed bubbles. So uh, just about everybody recommends that you hang it. Since I don't have a um, line tie here on the nose, I'm just gonna hang it on my rotisserie vertically like that and let it drip. That's what everybody recommends that uh, you do. So we're gonna give that a shot and hopefully those bubbles that I sanded out will kind of disappear when I brush this on. They may not, but we'll just, uh, we'll just see what happens. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so I can make more of the content you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.